Hello, friends and family. Welcome back to the show. It's lovely to see you again. First, some good news. The organization we're highlighting this week is Tap Cancer Out. This is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu-based organization working to combat cancer. Since the organization was founded in 2011, they have donated over $3.5 million, and they continue to raise more and more money each year. In 2021 alone, they raised $1.2 million. They do this through a number of means. They host events, they host jiu-jitsu tournaments, they sell merchandise and equipment like geese and rash guards, also general apparel, t-shirts, hats, things like that. I was looking for some BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu specific nonprofit organizations because training in martial arts has been a big part of my life since I was five years old, starting in more traditional Taekwondo. And Jiu-Jitsu really came into my life later in life, but it's become a passion of mine, a love of mine. And there are people who are using this great art form to give back, raise awareness, raise money. If you get a chance, check out tapcancer.org. There are many ways that you can support. This is Family Time 103 and we're talking about intrinsic motivation. In class this week, we're going to talk about extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation. Essentially, extrinsic motivation is being motivated by external factors, either trying to receive a reward or trying to avoid some sort of punishment or some sort of negative consequence. Extrinsic motivation isn't entirely bad. When I think of it in a school setting, it starts when we're young, when we're in elementary school, and we get to do things like clip up on the color chart for good behavior, or we get a sticker, or we get some sort of treat. That's extrinsic motivation. We're getting some sort of little reward. Or on the flip side, we get yelled at, or we have to stay in from recess. That's also extrinsic motivation because we're receiving some sort of punishment and we want to avoid that. Extrinsic motivation is something that we see throughout our entire lives. In a business setting, we have extrinsic motivators like a pay raise, or a promotion, or a new office, something like that. Those things are extrinsic. And they're not bad. We can enjoy getting rewarded. And we, it's natural for us to not like to get in trouble, to avoid punishments, those sorts of things. But ideally, we want students, I want students, I want athletes who are primarily intrinsically motivated. The tricky thing with that is it can be hard to find a way to tap in to that internal desire. Because that's what intrinsic motivation is. It's, It's something from within that drives us to succeed at our chosen endeavor. It's us sort of being task oriented and, and wanting to be successful for ourselves. I really believe that type of motivation is in everybody. And when I see students in school who maybe get disillusioned with academics, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that sometimes we kind of kind of beat it out of some of our students in some way. And that's, I don't think that's usually intentional. But sometimes in school, we're, we're trying to fit students into certain boxes. We do this in life. We think, okay, everybody has to do this thing and we need to stand in line and we need to raise our hands. And I'm not 
knocking those things. I work as a teacher. I work with multiple grade levels too. And we have to have rules. We have to have structure. And people desire structure to a point. Giving structure and guiding students lets them know they're cared for. Let's everybody in our lives know we care for them. If we're providing them some structure, we're not ignoring them. I think people really desire some level of discipline in their lives. So I'm not, I'm not knocking the structures that we use because they're necessary, especially when you have 30 students in a classroom and they all have their own individual needs and challenges and problems outside of school. We have to give some some blanket rules and some blanket structure to everybody. But ideally, we work to find ways to tap into the intrinsic motivation that we all have. I think of all of us at our earliest stages in life. We want to learn. We're curious about everything when we come into this world. We're burning to learn. I don't think that ever goes away. Sometimes it gets buried. Sometimes it's, well, maybe I don't love this academic subject or... I struggle in a classroom setting, whatever it is. But that desire is still there. And we can find ways to tap into it. It's hard to do. It's a lot harder than just giving some sort of reward. That's one of the reasons I struggle with grading a little bit. Just in the sense that I don't love it. I don't love the assigning an A, B, C, D, F, those sorts of things. Because it often becomes a game, a game to get the A or to simply pass, depending on where on that spectrum certain students fall. And it becomes a game of like, what do I have to do to get blah? What do I have to do to get an A? Just tell me what I'm supposed to do and I'll do that. Or... What is the bare minimum I have to do so that I can pass the class and I can move on? Where our focus should always be on learning. And I understand that we don't naturally gravitate gravitate toward every subject. Not every lesson is going to be our favorite. I am a proponent of having a well-rounded education. Of learning as much as possible because I think that makes us powerful. I try to instill that in my students or try to give them that message that even if you don't love whatever it is, don't love math, don't love science, don't love English, whatever it might be, by having knowledge in those areas, you become dangerous. You give yourself choices in the world because you have skills. That, to me, is an important thing. We all want to be successful at something. And I think finding success, especially finding success in areas that are challenging to us, I think that translates. I think that translates to everything we do in life. The trick is for us teachers and coaches to try to tap into that intrinsic motivation. To try to sell the value of whatever it is we're trying to teach and trying to convince our students, our athletes, the people we work with, trying to convince them that there is value, that this is important. Sometimes that's a hard sell. But I think it's important for us to remember that it's in everybody. 
everyone has some sort of inherent motivation. And sometimes we just, we got to spend some time trying to find it, trying to tap into the thing that actually lights up a student's eyes, that actually engages them, trying to create opportunities to show that intrinsic motivation because sometimes it does get buried and it becomes hard to find. Sometimes our students forget they have it. And if we at least give them opportunities to find it in certain areas, that can bleed across into different subject areas, into other areas that might be more challenging. One thing I'm going to have my students focus on this week is I want them to pick a time where they did have to take some initiative on their own and they had to work independently because they were motivated. And we're going to talk about how that does translate to other aspects of our life. Until next time, much love. My blog post this week is Watts and Lasso. I've been listening to a lot of Alan Watts lectures lately. If you're unfamiliar with Alan Watts, he was something of a philosopher. He was a writer, a lecturer. He's one of the people largely responsible for bringing traditional Eastern philosophies like Buddhism and Taoism to Western civilization, to our Western cultures. I am a fan of the way Alan Watts delivers his messages. He does it in a way that's palatable, that takes some complex concepts and makes them easy to digest. And I have an affinity for many of the tenets of Eastern philosophies like Buddhism and Taoism. I usually start my day with some sort of breath work, some sort of priming, a little bit of meditation. And lately I've been... After those practices, I've been turning on my phone and dialing up an Alan Watts lecture while I brush my teeth and go through the routines of the morning before I head off to the weight room or head off to my classroom, whatever it may be. I also recently watched the two seasons of the television show Ted Lasso, which is an Apple TV Plus show. Pretty popular show. Stars Jason Sudeikis. The show focuses on an American football coach who gets hired to coach a Premier League soccer team in England. My kids and I watched it together. We actually, everybody was kind of under the weather in our house. We had some sickness going through the house. And decided we were going to have a lazy weekend, which we rarely have. We're pretty busy most times. We're just going to have a lazy weekend. We weren't going to do much. We're going to lay low, stay at home. And I I have no problem admitting we watched all of the two seasons, all the first two seasons of Ted Lasso in that one weekend. We binge watched, we hammered them out. We loved it. It was a show that had been suggested to me by several different people who thought that I would connect with it. It's a show about coaching and about relationships and it's funny and emotional and I love all those sorts of things and everyone who recommended it to me was absolutely correct. Love the show. My kids loved it. My daughter Claire is actually almost all the way through it a second time. She's been watching Rewatching the episodes on her iPad when she gets up in the morning. Absolutely love the show. 
I was thinking of the connections between Alan Watts and Ted Lasso. And it really comes down to the way I want to live. I connect with many of the principles of Buddhism and Taoism because I work on being less attached to the material things in my life, to living more in the moment, more simply, more deliberately, of trying to get away from my ego and my impulses. I also have a strong emotional connection to the work that I do as a teacher, as a coach, to my role as a father. I believe in creating positive relationships. I believe in elevating other people. That's what Ted Lasso is really about. And I think that's what I want. I want some combination of of those two existences in my life. That's what I try to create. A balance between letting go of that which is non-essential. Letting go of a lot of the distractions of our daily lives. Of trying to be in that moment so that I can focus more of my attention on the things that really matter. And more often than that, then not, that's connections. It's connections with my kids and my students and my athletes and my friends and my, my siblings, my parents, my everybody around me. That's what I, I want. I want those positive connections. And even through this work, I want to try to put some positivity into the world. And I want to help people think and feel. And it's a way for me to process my thoughts and feelings. So that's that's really why I was thinking of those two things together. It's been a lot of the recent media I've been taking in, but it speaks to what I care about. And I could just use a little more Watts and Lasso in my life. This week's podcast is brought to you by Jump Ropes. Jump Ropes are pretty cool, actually. If you're from St. Ansgar, if you're an athlete from St. Ansgar, I graduated from St. Ansgar High School. I teach and coach there now. But if you're an athlete from St. Ansgar, you can probably jump rope pretty well. I think jumping rope has maybe fallen to the wayside a little bit as a training activity. It's kind of associated with like old school boxing and wrestling, those sorts of things. But we actually still do a good bit of jump roping in our strength and conditioning program. I think more than a lot of other places. But I think it's great exercise. It's a great way to work full body coordination. We do a lot of different running stuff with jump ropes. We go forward and backwards and do karaoke and turn around while jumping rope. And it's a lot of body control things, but it's also conditioning and being light on our feet. I like jump ropes. And I kind of got thinking, like, I wonder... I wonder where the jump rope came from. It seems like it's probably been something that's been around for a long, long time. And sure enough, I found some interesting history. Some people think that it maybe had some origins in ancient China. There were some stories about Chinese rope makers who would create a, create ropes and use them as a New Year's celebration, they would have a game called the 100 Rope Jumping Game or Jumping 100 Threads, 
But the most common sort of origin that I, I found just quickly looking through internet searches and clicking on some different sites dates back to about 1600 BC in Egypt where people would jump vines as a conditioning practice. So it's pretty crazy to think about. It's been around that long. It's one of the reasons why I still think it's a very valid form of conditioning. I'm all for new things, new practices, learning new skills. But I, I also believe in blending in just the tried and true stuff that has been getting results for many, many years. And the jump rope certainly falls into that category. I also like the idea of the jump rope as a game, as something fun. I was also, as I was doing some of this quick research, clicking on things and looking at the history of like, double dutch and that is sort of a playground thing and its connection to maybe urban areas and especially with african american communities and that was kind of cool i didn't i hadn't really thought about that of a cultural connection to something like double dutch but i was kind of falling down a rabbit hole looking at some of those things so this week's podcast is going to be brought to you by Jump Ropes. If you haven't jump roped in a while, give it a shot. It's a pretty good time. Good exercise too. And you don't need don't need a lot of space, don't need a lot of equipment. Just a jump rope. Until next time, thanks for joining me for this episode of the podcast. As always, you can reach out to me through LukeNielsen.com, LukeNielsenMedia at Gmail, LukeNielsenMedia on the socials. I will continue to put out some of the Earnest from Earth chapters. We kind of had a little break here a couple weeks. Kind of always kind of depends on how busy I am with other things. It's track season right now, so I'm coaching track and field, which I love to do. Sometimes that leads, leaves a little less time for some of this media stuff. That's okay, but I've, I've got some more chapters recorded from Ernest from Earth along with the curriculum guide. So I'll be posting a few of those pretty quickly here. And also, this is something that's kind of funny to me. I was looking up something on my website, on LukeNielsen.com, on my phone and it popped up and it gave me the option to put the Luke Nielsen Media app directly onto my phone. And I didn't even know that was a thing. It's always kind of fun for me when I discover something that, like, somebody will tell me, like, oh, hey, your book is available here. Or, <laughs> or I listen to you through this or whatever it is. It's like, oh. I didn't even, didn't even know it was out there in that way. So the app, you can get the Luke Nielsen Media. I, don't, I have an Android phone, I, so it seems to be available on Android. I'm curious. I imagine it's available on iPhone too. I don't know. I didn't even know it was an option, but it's pretty cool. You can get the little app, the button, click right on it, and it comes up with whatever's new on the website. So that is an option as well. But until next time... Love yourself, love each other, love the fight.